Hello, everybody. Welcome to the ClearFly portal training. Uh, my name is Tina Mann, and I will be your host today. In today's training, we will be covering the code building process. So this will be a 20 to 30 minute uh, training with very useful and uh, informative information for you guys who are in the sales, especially while creating the codes. Um, in today's training, uh, we will go over how to build different types of codes, both basic and complex codes for new customers, uh, how to modify codes and change quantities and prices when needed, how you can create a code when you want to renew a contract or add service to an existing customer. Uh, we will also go over some new enhancement to the coding and the proposal process uh, during the presentation. So let's get started. Um, coding. So what is really coding? Coding is a process where you build a code based on your customer's needs and requirements in order to create a rate sheet, uh, which will provide them the prices for all services and products that you are offering to them. And it also provides them a contract term, uh, which is the minimum duration for which the services may be provided. Once the code is built, you can send the, them the proposal. And if they agree to the terms and prices, then they accept the proposal and do the signing process. So when, when do you really code? Uh, you need to code if you, when you have a new potential customer. Uh, you can also need to code for when you have an existing customer who has uh, another location or who needs a separate invoice or when an existing customer's contract has expired and you want to renew the contract. Um, and you can do this uh, as we've divided in different types of codes by just creating a basic code, a complex code, and as we name it, add and renewal codes. And this is what I'm going to cover in this training session, the, the three different quotes. Um, and for your uh, better understanding, I am going to use the demo portal today. Uh, so I can walk you step by step process on all these three quotes. And I'll also cover the new enhancements when they come during the process. So uh, like I said, I will be using the demo portal. Um, and this is exactly what you guys see. And um, I am going to assume that you have the sales dashboard permission level if you are creating the codes. And you would see this section right here. Um, the first code that I'm going to walk you through is going to be the basic code. Um, so when you have to create a basic code for a new customer, you can just come into this codes uh, link right here. Uh, actually any code, but just click that and it'll take you to your um, account, the third party account, uh, where it will say your name and the manager and your payout account. When you scroll down, it takes you to the code tab. In the code tab on the right hand side, there's a create button. That's what you're going to click. Once you click that, it'll give you the option of uh, if it's a new customer or it's a current existing customer. So we are creating it for a new customer. Uh, then we need, and why they ask is because if it's an existing customer, the system automatically pulls their summary account. Whereas if it's a new customer, it will ask you the information. So the new customer, <clears throat> once you click that, it's going to ask you uh, what kind of uh, voice uh, are they requiring. And Clearfly offers two different types. Uh, the metered voice, uh, which is um, basically used by extremely heavy users or light users, and it is billed per minute for the outbound calling sessions. Um, whereas standard voice, which is our most commonly used and is, um, uh, you know, the favorite one, as it is uh, effectively unlimited, I should say, it includes 1,500 um, inbound minutes per session, calling session. Um, the good thing is that they can pool the minutes of uh, each uh, these minutes together. 
So for example, if a customer has 10 SIP trunks, uh, then they have the, uh, basically they have 15,000 minutes for a month to go over. And which is why it is effectively unlimited as this never happens, um, except for the heavy users. And that's when they choose the meter choice voice. So uh, I'm gonna click, uh, click the standard. Um, then it's gonna ask you for the customer's name. And this is just to identify the code. This is not the uh, legal name or anything that will be collected later. So I'm just gonna do um, uh, a name like Tina's test and next. Uh, next would be the contract term. So we give you the option from month to month if they want no contract from all the way to five years. Um, and it's just depending on you and your customer's requirements, what you want to choose. If you don't pick an option, the system automatically chooses three years, which is the 36th uh, month. And I'm going to stick to that. Um, code name. Code name, if you have multiple codes, you'll be, if you are going to make multiple codes for this customer, then it's helpful, uh, you know, to give it a short name. So for example, on this one, I'm just going to do the basic name because we'll be making a couple of codes uh, in Tina's test. So basic code. Uh, code notes, and it's optional, you don't have to do it. Codes notes is if you want to link anything or you want to tie anything to the code uh, in reference. And again, this is only for your eyes. The customer doesn't see these notes. Uh, if you want to say something like, hey, uh, introduce Tina to unified billing, ask her once the code is one or something, you know, you could just ask uh, or put anything. Um, agent reference. Uh, for some of you, this means adding a name of a person who sold it, whereas for some others, it might mean adding like a team code or a team name, uh, you know, just to help uh, with mapping out the commissions for the teams uh, and the salespeople for reporting purposes. This will actually transfer the, to the summary account if you put that in there. And if the quote is one, then it will be included in the payout uh, reports uh, uh, on the commission transactions. So uh, let's say Tom, Paul, and um, branded. Branded is basically if you want to keep this as your name, branded as your name, or you want to keep it as Clearfly. So we'll just choose you, and then you create a code. Uh, over here, it's going to ask you for an address. Uh, a proper site address is required before you can even start building the code for two main reasons. First, the address needs to be validated in order to make sure that it is serviceable, that Clearfly can provide service to that particular location. Uh, and the second is to set the right rate center so that uh, the products can be properly taxed. So, uh, also, sometimes the address might not validate, uh, and there could be many reasons for that, uh, you know, because sometimes we don't provide service to that area and it might not validate, or there are multiple rate centers uh, available for that particular location, or if it's a new construction and, uh, you know, happening there, and we would then need the GPS coordinates for that, or the tax code isn't set up. So, but if the uh, address doesn't validate, please continue to build the code uh, as we do get notified and uh, we will review and reach out to you. So continue uh, generating the code if it uh, doesn't validate. Uh, so let's try it. I'm gonna just, and you can copy and paste the address as well for your convenience. Uh, and for entering the address, we just require the street number, street name, and the zip code. Uh, we don't need uh, the city or anything. So um, let's do this. And I'm going to just copy and paste uh, and start validation. So you will see that it's saying this is a validated option. It's green. And sometimes it might say it's not validated. And like I said, just keep going and building that uh, code up. Uh, the other, another thing that I want to bring to your notice is if in case there are multiple options of the fully validated uh, options, then please uh, pay good attention to if there is an, the address, like the north, south, east, west, 
or the sweet number, or uh, it could be just different and just use the best suited to your address. This one has only one, so we will just use that. Then it will take you to the voice part, basically um, if the voice is needed or not. So this is only for people who are just building a CFAX. If they don't need the voice and if you just need the CFAX, this is uh, where you will click right here and build a CFAX code only. Uh, this one will say voice needed. And then it'll ask you for configuration. Configuration is if uh, what kind of uh, phone system are uh, they gonna connect to. If they need a SIP native, a SIP PRI handoff or analog handoff. The most common is SIP native. So we'll stick to the SIP native and then we'll click next. Uh, single site or multiple site. This is mainly for nine, E911 purposes. So in case uh, there is a remote worker working from home, uh, especially during these times, you can choose multiple sites and uh, you know have two 911s. If it's just a single office and only one location, then you could just click single site and that's what we've done. Concurrent calls is how many number of SIP trunks they would need. Uh, minimum requirement is two. We will just for simplicity for the numbers, we'll just do 10. And then next, ported numbers is how many numbers they want to port if they have to port any numbers. Um, again, uh, any numbers, uh, quantity of numbers up to 49 is comes under a local port order. Anything over uh, 49, so 50 and any number over comes a flat uh, enterprise port order and the prices are different. Local port order is $10 and then the enterprise port order would be 150. And I'll show you some uh, ways of how to change that as well. So for this one, we'll just keep uh, that they need to port 20 numbers. And let's say they need only two new numbers. Um, and let's say they don't need a toll free number um, and CFAX. If they want to add CFAX, they can choose CFAXs right here and they'll give you all the different options. Let's say they need a CFAX 220 and they need two quantities. Um, they also have the option if they need to add an ad plan if they're using a fax machine. Uh, so let's say this they are using a fax machine. Uh, so this will connect, this analog is um, applicable with two. So only one adapter is good uh, for two lines. Uh, moving forward, uh, all looks good uh, next. And then I'll give you a quick review. So we are looking for 10 sub trunks, we're putting 20 numbers and just two new numbers. And then we need two CFAXs and an adapter. Looks right. And there you go. This is how you create a basic quick uh, uh, code. And you can come and verify everything. And you can see how uh, this has uh, been created. Uh, the next step um, would be, um, you know, uh, moving it to available. And there you go. And then this will give you the option to send the proposal, which you can press here. And then you can send the proposal to whoever you want to. I'm just going to put my name and we can send this proposal. So the proposal is sent to the customer. And this is like a basic uh, code has been created. I want to bring your notice to a couple of enhancement here, uh, which are added. Um, agent reference was one, which we did, uh, I explained you, and we did Tom Hall. Rate sheet style is another one. So what this does is basically gives you an option of providing a full rate sheet versus a summary rate sheet. A full rate sheet is uh, the one where the prices are listed per item. And a summary is where the whole lump sum uh, price is given. Individual itemized bill is not given. This is for competitive reasons. If you don't wanna show, you could just do that. And it, it uh, you know, helps you. Um, also, you have the a third one is display estimated taxes. So in case you want to hide the taxes and not show them the taxes, uh, you are able to uh, do that. But I highly recommend that uh, you should um, 
you know, uh, make sure that if you are hiding the taxes, um, you please tell if you're pressing no here to display the taxes, then please make sure you explain to your potential customer that there will be taxes and fees added to the invoice, even if they are tax exempt. Uh, because having an uh, upset customer when they have their first invoice doesn't match up with the code. It's never a good thing. Uh, but you do have the options. So you could go here and uh, scroll down. It'll give you the option of a full rate sheet versus a summary rate sheet. Um, and uh, we could do just a summary rate sheet uh, and update it. So it'll do a summary rate sheet. And same thing with taxes to hide the taxes or not. Okay. Um, now I want to go to the next part where if you want to modify your code, for example, you send that code and the customer says, hey, uh, we want to add more phone numbers. We wanna do 50 uh, phone, uh, port 50 numbers and uh, they want to negotiate with the price. So I'm gonna show you how you can come back and change uh, on this. So you can come back on this code. Um, if the code, I remember it was moved to available to be sent, uh, and you cannot make any changes when the quote is in the available state. So you have to move it back to quoting to make any changes. So once you move it back to quoting, it will allow you to make the changes. So let's say that you wanna give your a customer a good price and um, some discount and you wanna drop the rate. Uh, so it will, when you click on the rate sheet, it will show you your floor rate and that's the minimum you can go on to. So let's say you are uh, you want to get this customer and you give him a good price and you are changing it to 20. And that's all you do to change it to 20. It'll give you a little code how much commission and everything gets affected. And you update it and there you go. So now the rates have been changed to 20. If you go back, you could see that it has been changed to 20 from the $25. Now let's say, the customer said that you want to change the uh, the port order. Um, so you will go here and instead of 22, you want to say 50, 52. So now they are um, over 50. So the, and you update that. Um, but remember this was a local port order. So the price for the port order needs to be changed. So you will cancel that and you will delete that and then you will come to the action button, add product on the drop menu, you will see the enterprise port order and that's what needs to be added. It's a one-time charge only and there you go. So it will change and that's the updated, that's how you will change anything if you need to change just on the action button, move to coding, click on it, you can add product, delete products. That's how you would change or uh, modify a code. And then again, you uh, make sure that you go back to the code, move it to available, and then only you will be able to send the proposal. Okay, so this was the first part. Now I'm gonna cover the second code, um, which would be a, a little complex code where they'll have two service addresses. So again, I'll go back to the code like you did before, and then create a code. Let's say it's a new customer. I'm gonna browse fast because I've already explained you everything. Standard voice, let's say, uh, this is again, Tina's test and next. And contract term, let's keep it three years. Code name, let's say complex. Um, and then code notes, if you want any agent reference, there is none, let's say, okay, cool. Enter the address. I'm just gonna copy paste this one. And start validation, agreed. Voice needed, yes, choose configuration, SIP native, next. And let's say this is a single site. Um, this one is a single site and they just need five uh, SIP trunks on this one and they wanna just put 10 numbers on this one. And new number, let's say they need two. And no toll free, so zero. And 
keep going, no see facts. Let's say next simple quote on the first looks right. There you go. You've created a quick, fast quote for them. But this customer also has another site, let's say, and it's under the same and they want same invoice. Um, and we should be able to add the site right here. So we're going to click here. We're going to add site. It's going to ask for an address. So again, when um, uh, they ask for an address, we will, um, I'm going to just copy paste another address. Um, or we could just say, 1002, uh, let's say uh, Levi. Uh, this is a demo portal, so um, we have to be, um, and then let's say the zip code is 59101. Okay, uh, let's start validating. It didn't get it. So uh, sometimes if I'm not doing the right thing, it will not, but let's start. And it takes it now. Uh, use perfect um, voice needed configuration. Step native. Next, let's say this site. Uh, somebody works remotely. The owner works remotely and needs a, a nine one one. So we'll say who on this site. Uh, concurrent calls. They just need eight and. Porting numbers, they just need five porting numbers. And new numbers, they don't need any new numbers. Uh, toll free, don't need any toll free. And let's say they don't need any CFAX either. So it looks right, perfect. And there you go. So you have built a complex code with two um, uh, you know, locations, two sites right here. Um, and um, that's how you would build a code and the same thing you would go up and uh, move it to available and send the uh, code so move to available move to available and there you go send the proposal and i'm going to just send it to myself um, the fourth enhancement is the personal message which i want to bring to your notice um, this basically when you are sending a proposal to a customer this gives you the option to uh, write a personal message to the customer giving them guidance hey uh, this is the signing process uh, step two uh, this uh, press accept or you know whatever you want to connect to if you have questions feel free to reach out to me whatever you want to say you could just do that and uh, it will put it on the quote right on the proposal the email that is sent so we're going to just send it. It's creating the rate sheet and then the message. <clears throat> That's how you will build a complex code. Uh, moving next, I'm going to go to um, existing customer. So for example, the third one is if a, a customer has, uh, you know, the contract has expired or if the customer wants to make changes or add some more services. So how would you do? So let's say uh, I'm going to go to, um, um, you know, the dashboard here. And if you have the SBN of the customer, uh, you could just enter the SBN and straight away go to that customer. But because this is a sandbox and, um, you know, I can look up all these customers, let's say it's for widgets, which is our, uh, uh, customer here in the demo portal. You will come here and you will go on their sales tab. Once you are on the customer's SBN number, you will go on the sales tab and it will take you to the quotes and that's where you will create an ad quote. Let's say this customer wants to add a seed fax, right? So it will always tell, already tell you because it's pulled up the account, it will already tell you that it's configured as a standard. If he wants to change it to metered, then you could change it, but it's already standard. So we'll stick to that. And uh, it will pull up all the account information uh, from the customer and then we'll verify that. And if the contract needs to be uh, renewed, uh, we'll, uh, you know, you can renew it right now, but we'll keep it as um, the month to month, the contract remains the same. He do doesn't want to change. And then code name, we could say just add, Oh, sorry. 
uh, we can say add to uh, the quotes and there you go. Um, and then optional quotes if they needed add CFAX and then what uh, renew contract later if you want to and then create a quote. So this will create the quote right here because it has followed up, but the, you can see there is no products added here. This is where you will come action and then you will add the site. When you add site, it will pull their existing billing account. If it's a new site, the customer is adding, then you'll press new site. We're just using the existing site because the customer just wants to add a CFAX to this, right? Um, so we will go to site action, manage site um, and products. So add products right here. And let's say the customer wants to add a CFAX 750 and they want to add two of those and then they will add. And then they also need an adapter. So we will find the adapter right here and the log adapter and they just need one. Okay, perfect. And that's how this is done. Once this is done, you'll move back to the code. It has added that code for them. And you would just go back here, actions, move to available and send. Um, same scenario, I want to show you in case you go back to the widgets. Uh, and now let's say they want to re you want to renew their contract. Uh, quickly, you will again go to the sales, create new, standard, same thing, and now the contract terms. So you want to renew them for three years. We will pick that next and same thing, create a quote. <clears throat> Once you come here, all you do is if you're renewing, you will transfer the existing services. So all billing accounts, if you're renewing, if they have multiple billing accounts, that's what, so we'll just keep it all because, you know, if they have only one and then transfer all that and it will pull up all that they have already here and <clears throat> it will send the rate sheet with the 36 contract, another 36 months. And if there are any changes that they need to make, then you can make those changes to that they wanted to add another CFAX, two more CFAXs for 750 or whatever. So I hope you got that and move it to available and that's it. And that's how it's sent. Well, um, I'm sure I'm running out of time as well, but I'm sure you uh, got all this. And this was all I was going to cover in this presentation, the different types of quotes that can be built. But um, before I leave, I do want to share my contacts. So this is the sales contacts. This is the sales team, uh, sales at clearfly.net. If you have general questions, you can always email us on that. And this is the toll free number, press option two and you would reach the sales department. If you press option one, you would reach the support or the technical uh, support department. And for three, you would reach the orders and the project department. Bob Jenkins, Sam Johnson, Rob Lewis are our three account managers. And I'm sure you guys have one of them. Tom Hall and myself, we are in the back. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to your account managers. Please feel free to reach out to us. You, these are our direct lines as well. Or you could just email us at sales at clearfy.net. If you have questions, these are some other useful emails. If you have billing questions, billing at clearfy.net. And technical or support questions, support at clearfly. Same thing with orders, orders at clearfly.net. And of course, I always recommend the community posts. So if you go there, you have any suggestions, you need some things, go ahead and log in and register yourself. I hope this was uh, helpful for all of you and uh, I will see you next time. Thank you, have a great day, bye-bye.